Noise is sound that is loud, unpleasant or undesired. Sound is vibration energy that passes through air or other media and is received by the ear, stimulating the auditory nerves and producing the sensation of hearing. The energy produced when something vibrates produces sound waves that have a definite pattern. The wavelength determines the pitch of the sound. Long, slow waves are a low pitch, like a foghorn. Short, fast waves are a high pitch, like a whistle. Frequency is measured in hertz, or waves per second. The lowest, slowest sound a human can hear is approximately 20 hertz. The highest sound a human can hear is approximately 20,000 hertz, or 20 kilohertz. The strength or loudness of a sound is determined by the amplitude or height of the sound waves. Tall waves are loud, short waves are quiet. Tall fast waves are a rattle, short long waves are a hum. Loudness is measured in decibels. The scale runs from zero, which is the threshold of hearing, to 140, which is the threshold of pain. The decibel scale is logarithmic in nature. This means that a 10 decibel increase is actually 10 times louder. So 80 decibels is 10 times louder than 70 decibels. And a 3 decibel increase is a doubling in loudness. So 73 decibels is twice as loud as 70 decibels. Health effects of noise. Noise at work can cause hearing loss that can be temporary or permanent. Temporary deafness is often experienced after leaving a noisy place. Although hearing typically recovers within a few hours, it should not be ignored. Continued exposure to high levels of noise can permanently damage hearing. Permanent hearing damage can be caused in two ways. Sudden, extremely loud, explosive noises, e.g. from cartridge-operated machines, can cause immediate permanent damage. This is often referred to as blast deafness, or acoustic trauma. Usually hearing loss occurs gradually because of prolonged exposure to noise. It may only be when damage caused by noise over the years combines with hearing loss due to aging that people realize how deaf they've become. Tinnitus, ringing, whistling or buzzing or humming in the ears may also be caused as a result of exposure to workplace noise. Noise action levels. There are three noise action levels defined in the noise at work regulations. At each level, the employer is required to take certain steps to reduce the harmful effects of noise on hearing. The lower exposure action value is a daily or weekly average of 80 decibels. Employers need to provide information and training and make hearing protection available. The upper exposure action value is a daily or weekly average of 85 decibels and employers need to take reasonably practicable measures to reduce noise exposure such as engineering controls or technical measures and they also need to provide mandatory hearing protection pending engineering controls and where necessary after engineering controls. The exposure limit value is a daily or weekly average of 87 decibels and this level must not be exceeded taking hearing protection into account. Control measures. Noise control strategies involve controls at the source, the pathway and the receiver. Control the noise at source. Replace the machine with one with lower noise emissions. Move the machine to an area with fewer employees. Ensure the machine is being properly maintained and modify parts of the machine, e.g. by replacing components with ones designed to operate more quietly. Isolate panels or add damping materials to them. Isolate the machine from the building with isolation mounts or isolated foundations and fit appropriate silencers to air inlets and exhausts. Control the path of the noise. Fit a suitably designed enclosure around a machine if it does not require hands-on operation. Provide a noise haven for employees supervising the operation of large machines where enclosing the whole machine would be difficult. Erect barriers or screens between different elements in the production process 
separating quiet operations from noisy ones and add absorptive materials to the building to reduce reverberant noise, i.e. echoes. Control noise at the receiver. The receiver can be protected from the effects of noise by positioning or distance, reduction of the time exposed or provision of PPE. Position the worker further away from the source of the noise. Doubling the distance can reduce the effect of noise by 3 to 6 decibels. Except for very loud noises of over 130 decibels, it's the accumulated dose that causes hearing loss. Halving the time exposed will reduce the dose received by half, or 3 decibels. Personal hearing protection should be provided quickly on discovering a risk to health due to noise. It's not an alternative to technical and organisational noise controls, but a means of managing the immediate risk pending the development of other control measures. Longer term, it should be used where there is a need for additional protection beyond what has been achieved through noise control. Hearing protectors should be CE marked, in good condition, the correct size and worn properly.